In every game tick, an action is not just a choice, it's a necessity. Imagine combining the weirdest skills that can be trained together for efficient rates, speeding up the overall time to max all 23 skills. The max keep is my goal. I will achieve this in the shortest gameplay time possible. By choosing to be an Iron Man, I restrict myself from trading other players and using the Grand Exchange. I have to get everything myself. Welcome to my Max Cape Speedrun, Iron Man Edition, where our ultimate goal is to hit 2277 total by 1600 hours played. Last episode, we finally finished 90 Slayer, which meant after the long grind of 74 to 90, we finally earned a detour. And in that detour, it's time to finally see how much GP the last 16 Slayer levels actually made us. A long time ago, when I sold my runes from runecrafting, I never sold the chaos ones. Doing Slayer got me even more chaos runes, so now it's time to sell them. If I were to sell my chaos runes at El Carry like my other runes, I would get 45 GP per rune. Because I'm an Iron Man, GP is more valuable to me, so I need to find a better value for my 67,000 Chaos Runes. That's where Taco is going to come in. Using this shop in Tazar City, I can sell all of my Chaos Runes for 9 Taco each. After selling 67,000 Runes for 606k Taco, I made my way down to the Orin Gem Shop to buy some Onyx Bolt Tips. The way that most shops in this game work is that as you buy or sell over or under the original stock, the price will change. At default, there are 50 Onyx Bulk Tips per world. The first one costs 1300 each, and the next one 1320, etc. After buying 10, they become 1500 each. This price is where I admit that it's too expensive for me, and I move on to the next world and start over from the original 50. I have to buy 10 per world until I'm out of taco. And all of that taco later, we have 431 Onyx Bolt Tips. Looking at the wiki page, Onyx Bolt E's have a high out price of 9,000. That means that our 431 tips are going to be worth almost 3.9 mil, versus the 3 mil if we were to sell directly to the shop. All this took was a couple minutes of hopping and chopping. The rest of the process should be zero time. The next step to securing the bag from Slayer is to process all of my Alks. The best way to do this without losing any time is to head back to the day alt mine and do some day alk with my headache of an inventory. There was two reasons I stopped mining day alt after I had 95 RC banked. The first reason was that I knew I'd have to process my alks from Slayer somewhere and figured this would be the best place. Although I definitely can't admit that I did underestimate how annoying my inventory would be. I mean look at this. Every single slot is filled with some random items that I don't even know. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but this is only trip 1 out of 2 for our ALK. That's right, we have 50 plus different items to ALK. The second reason will make sense in a little bit. For now, let's just focus on making bank. 1 million gold pieces. 2 M's have been secured. 3, 4, Five, six. The onyx bolt tips are being attached to the runite bolts from Sepulchre to make onyx bolts when we run between rocks, wasting us zero time. Because we have the Tome of Fire, enchanting 10 onyx bolts costs us one death rune and one cosmic rune. This one death and cosmic rune will turn 10 bolts that would have been out for 8.1k each to 10 enchanted bolts that will be out for 9k each. Considering it's 10 bolts at a time, that's nearly an extra 9k GP per 1 cosmic and 1 death rune. Not to mention, it's also 0 time to enchant them, so this is infinitely worth it for me. Currently pacing to be the richest Iron Man to ever exist, we're just about finishing up our onyx bolts and our first inventory of alks. This one inventory got us 15 million gold pieces. But now, it's time for round 2. Whips, dragon harpoons, dragon arrows, you name it. They always said Slayer is good GP for Iron Man, so today, we are finding that out. Whips have an elk price of 76k, 
So I will happily ALK every single one I get. Of course, besides the one I'm going to use until 99 Slayer. Okay, maybe that inventory wasn't as exciting as I expected it to be, but we are now at 18 million cash. There's just one more step to getting our final GP count, selling runes. I never sold my soul runes when I hit 95 RC because I had no idea how many I was going to go through. But now that I've seen how many soul runes we actually use during Slayer, I have no problem selling all except for 2k for now. Soul, Law, Cosmic, Nature runes are all sold. And without trading any other players or using Grand Exchange, we now have 26 mil cash to use. I went to the very bottom of my bank just to find a little bit more GP, and the final count is 27 mil. I decided to spend 10 minutes to hopefully make enough house tabs for 99 Slayer, because the soft clay was already banked as a drop from Tower Neck Reels. Making the house tabs with clay already banked isn't that time consuming. Right before we blow away our GP, let's take a look at the current Elite Diary requirements. This diary has to be done before we return to Slayer. There happens to be a step to chop a redwood log, requiring 90 wood cutting. Or we could just get 87 and boost with our dragon axe. I want to spend my money on construction, however, training to 87 wood cutting should make me some more teak planks that I want to use, so I decided to very quickly do 87 wood cutting at Fossil Island Teaks. This is the fastest woodcutting XP in the game, however it does unfortunately require run energy. Because I need to use the teak logs anyway, after some testing I decided to drop all of my logs, however by the time I hit zero run energy, I would have a full log basket plus a full inventory of logs, which is the perfect time to bank and simply restore my run energy and repeat. Here is 85 woodcutting. When it came time to bank, I just emptied my log basket withdrew two energy potions just to make the trip last slightly longer, and then I would POH teleport and use my mountain dig site pendant, which also allowed me to send my butler for my inventory of logs to make planks, plus grab the pool for run energy. For those uneducated as to what I'm doing and why it works, just a quick summary. I'm using a knife on a mahogany log to get a chance at getting a teak log every three ticks. The normal rate for an axe if you're AFKing is every 4 ticks. If you specifically woodcut at certain areas, such as farming patches, which is what these teaks are, you can move a tile between each 3 ticks and get a chance at 2 teak logs, essentially chancing 2 teak logs every 3 ticks. This is why we call this 1.5 tick teaks. Here is level 86 woodcutting. And I kind of forgot how fast this skill actually is, but all in one day's work, level 87. I then made my way to my redwood farming patch and happily chopped one redwood for the diary. I also needed a chambers kill, so I found someone doing solos and logged out until they nearly completed the raid. And raid complete, that's another diary step out of the way. Now, finally, let's spend some money. I gathered all of my teak logs from Kingdom to this date, and the few I banked during wood cutting, and now I'm gonna turn them all into planks. One teak plank cost me 500 gold. On top of that, the butler wants 10k for every 10 trips I do. This is not going to be cheap. The last inventory, we now have 40,000 teak planks. That's 20 mil GP gone just in the logs. Our butler has also stolen 2 million from us. Mythical cape racks give us 123 XP per teak plank. So let's get this show on the road.
the big nine zero. Level 93 and and just short of level 94, we are out of planks. So now we're broke, not even 94 construction, and have no more teak logs. What do we do? Warning, if you take offense to seeing Iron Men use alts, please refrain from watching this next clip. Cranes. Now, I will be showing a more pleasing layout soon, but this is what my desktop looks like during cranes. In Hebox's most recent UIM Max video, he discovered this method. Cranes are located in Zaya, and when they remove the favors, they happen to buff the XP you get per crane. Using three planks and any types of nails, repairing a crane gives you whatever your crafting and construction level are, times four XP per repair. That is why I wanted to use all of my teak planks before coming here getting higher construction for better scaled rates. Because we already mined 75,000 sand a long time ago, and banked the glass for 97.5 crafting, unfortunately, as good as this method is, we can only do it for about 1.5 mil XP. Otherwise, we'd just be going post-99 crafting, and at that point, this method just isn't good. So sure, 100k an hour crafting and construction? That's fantastic. But that's not even close to what makes this method so good for me. If you're wondering what cranes cost, well, the answer is, they don't. You can buy normal planks from the Shades of Morton shop for 1 GP each. That's right, 1 coin per plank. Not even that, but for some unknown reason, the shop has a shared instance between mains and irons. So you can have an alt buy normal planks at the GE, and then sell them to the shop for your Iron Man, essentially allowing your Iron Man to unironically trade. Do I think this makes any sense? Not really. But does JX know about it and it still exists in the game? Yes. I mean, especially for my any% percent speedrun, I'd be stupid not to do this. I'm already so low on GP, and even though I can only do this for 1.5 mil XP, that's still saving myself like 8 mil. And the XP rates for both crafting and construction are higher doing this method versus what I get normally anyway. So how does this method work? Well, you click the crane and you have a chance to repair it. If you succeed in the first tick, you'll get XP. Should you fail, two things can happen. If doing this solo, 10 ticks later, or 6 if you were to re-click, you'll get another attempt to build it. If another person or account tries to build it and succeeds on their first tick, everybody on the crane gets XP. That's why the more accounts you have here to help you, the better. And here we go, here is level 98 crafting. I forgot to mention this, but you do also need to buy nails for this. However, bronze nails cost 2 GP each, and you use about 3k per hour. So if you want to do any calculations, just add an extra 6,000 gold pieces spent every hour for 100k construction. Oh, and of course, the shop works the same as the Shades of Morton one. Here is 95 construction. And I had time to drop a fat 4 hour session, and I think I got the hang of this method by now. I'm getting 110k crafting and 105k construction, which I think is pretty decent. I do still have molten glass in my bank, and unfortunately, because I already went through the Iron Man process of collecting seaweed, sand, super glass make, I would feel awful not to blow the glass during room crafting. So with 500k crafting until 99, it's time to quit cranes. The biggest reason I randomly did cranes is because I was scared of them fixing the shop mechanics. But now, cranes are out of my mind, so we can focus back to our original plan, finishing the Karen Diary for Slayer. I'm so upset I didn't save one, but I do need a raw chompy in order to make a wild pie to boost our Slayer 5 levels to kill a Hydra. And just to make sure that I don't burn this pie, I will use the Bake Pie spell on Lunars, which has a 100% success rate to not burn. And pretty simple, just kill the little Hydras that have 300 hit points, and that diary step is out of the way. And lastly, I need to kill Scotizo. And that is Corend Elite Diary complete, a free 50,000 Herblore XP. 
And with Rada's Blessing 4, we now have infinite teleports to the mountain. Okay, before I officially get back to swaying, I just want to runecraft for one day. I only had 2k blood runes remaining, and well, we're gonna need more than that for Slayer. What better way to get blood runes than to use all of my pure essence that I got as a drop while slaying? This also gives me an opportunity to use the remaining of my glass. Okay, we're coming close to 13 million crafting XP. I think I'm good to call it here. The rune crafting XP doesn't look good because we are using pure essence, however, that just means we get more runes, which is more GP for us. The remaining of my crafting XP should come from running between tasks and blowing glass, or from making more Slayer bracelets, which we definitely will need. What better way to return to Slayer than to remember that we got Abbey Demons before stopping, our favorite task. It was a long time since we've gotten 90, but we are officially back on the grind. Skip. 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 Dark Beast? I forgot, but yeah, level 90 does unlock these. Dark Beasts are kind of like a Black Dragon task. You do them, not because they're good, but because they take less than 5 minutes. Dirt though will only assign 10 to 20 Dark Beasts, so naturally, we will continue to do these until 99 just for the points. This task, Worms, is the main reason we wanted Karend Elite Diary. Wrath Runes are great here. They offer the bones away for 150 prayer XP each. However, when you have infinite teleports to Worms, it's better to bank the bones as a normal Iron Man, and then go to the Wilderness to use them. Because of the Wilderness Altar's ability to save a bone 50% of the time, we go from getting 150 XP per bone with Wrath Runes, to 350 prayer XP per bone at the Altar. This 230% increase in prayer XP per bone makes it more than worth it. The infinite teleports back to the mountain whenever I have a full inventory makes the banking process extremely fast. Here is level 85 attack. I missed it like the good YouTuber I am, but we did just hit 88 prayer. I met this very thick creature at the club last night, but she told me GZ on 91 Slayer. I also just hit 95 strength and 117 combat. I was using my whip on shared, however at level 95 strength, I'm able to train only attack with my whip without losing any max hits. I also missed 86 attack, could not remember, but also 87 attack, obviously I wasn't going to remember. But I did also get level 89 prayer. How could I forget the halfway point? Here is 92 Slayer. And it turns out I was so good last time that after completing my next task, she came back for me. That's right, I got a superior after the task ended. But of course, I couldn't get the heart. Okay, hear me out. In my defense, I forgot that this skill even existed, but I did just get 99 hit points and 118 combat. Forgot to hit the record button before, but 89 attack. I cannot believe it, I did it. This is huge. This changes everything. I just hit record before level 90 prayer. Back to back on time recordings, 93 Slayer. This unlocks us the best task. Smoke Devils. Before we start Smoke Devils, we need to restock. I have 1000 blood and soul runes remaining, I have no idea how much GP I made from 1993, and I have no idea how much more GP I have to make to ensure that we don't get screwed in our buyables. Everything is just recycle and recalculate at this point. The money problem is a massive headache. This is a great point to end today's episode, so let's do a quick recap. I can officially announce that being 2179 total, we are officially under 100 levels until we are maxed. Our melees are pacing about as expected with Slayer, and while the prayer looks a little behind, bear in mind that we've been banking bones. Those bones have not been used yet. Being 100% honest with you guys, I am genuinely terrified of my buyables. Construction, smithing, fletching, all of it. I always expected to be poor, but just not this poor. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, as always, TY for watching. 
If you want to keep up with this journey live, tune in to my live streams of Iron Man gameplay at kick.com slash jcwrs. As always, take care everybody and peace out.